And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at Whitehall, uh, Whitehall Mystery. This is a sequel to Letters from Whitechapel. Letters from Whitechapel is a game about Jack the Ripper who is escaping after he has done his dastardly deeds and going to his hideout. People, the other players are investigators hunting him down. Well, the theme here is essentially the same. Um, you are hunting down uh, these people. I don't even know if it's Mr. Jack. It doesn't matter. Uh, a bunch of investigators are hunting down the criminal, trying to catch him. Uh, up to three players are chasing down another player. Could be one versus one, two versus one, three versus one. And they're seeing if they can catch him. Here's how it plays. <laughs> Okay, so this is the map that people are playing with, the map of London. There's 189 locations on it. And so Mr. Jack is going to be moving from circle to circle. So he might move here, he might move here. The investigators are going to be moving from square to square. So they're never quite on the same spot as Mr. Jack. Now, to start the game, Mr. Jack is going to have a tracking pad that he's going to keep hidden. Um, he'll keep that hidden behind a little board which shows a map of the whole city so he can stare at this board rather than at the, the board here. And he is going to pick four of the white circles, one in each quadrant of the board. So see some of these are white, some of these are red. So he might pick these white circles. It doesn't really matter which circles he's picking, um, but he has to go to all those circles. Now, Mr. Jack is going to start on one of those circles. Uh, so he might start here on 135. And everyone's going to know which one he starts on. So he, he put his figure there to show everybody. He's going to write the four numbers here at the top of the paper. And then he's going to write down his starting location here. Mr. Jack then has 15 turns to get to one of the other three. On his turn, like I said, he will just move from one circle to another circle. Except he won't show it. Instead, he'll write the numbers down where he's moving. The investigators, and there can be up to three investigators. Oh, I'm sorry, there's always three investigators, but three other players can control them. They're going to be starting on these yellow squares in the middle of the board. And so Mr. Jack is going to take a turn, and then the investigators are going to move. Now, when Mr. Jack moves, he has some special tiles that he can use, and each of these are once per game. So like he might use this alley movement which lets him go from one spot on a block to another spot, crossing the block. It's like he's cutting across the alleys. A boat will let him move from one blue spot to another blue spot in the same body of water. And a coach lets him move twice. He can even move through an investigator while he might not normally do that. And he has two of each of these tiles. The investigators have a special ability each, and if there's fewer than three players playing, one of them is going to get the dog who, which basically that's the yellow investigator, gives him more special abilities. Each investigator can once per game do something. Like for example, you can move the uh, Jasper wiring. Once per game you can move any other figure to a crossing next to your figure. He can call someone next to him. So the players are going to be moving and then they're going to decide to look for clues or arrest. Now arrest is pretty obvious. They're saying if I go here, and I, I'm in this, I can pick one spot that's next to me and say 126 or 141. I can say I'm arresting 141. If Mr. Jack is there, game is over and the investigators win. Otherwise, you can look for clues. One at a time, you announce the, cir the circles next to you. So I'll say 141 and I would say, oh, yeah, I was there once. If Mr. Jack was ever there, we put a yellow token on that spot and we stop. If he's not there, you can say, okay, was he at 126? Yes. So. Mr. Jack's only going to show one clue, except one of the investigators shows the clues at all the locations. And this way, investigators know where Mr. Jack has been or may even be right now. When Mr. Jack gets to a, one of these red spots, he has to show it. So I'll be like, all right, I'm here now. This is not right when you arrive. It's right after you leave, essentially. Investigators now are going to try to stop him from getting to the other two. If Mr. Jack can't get from one spot to the other spot in 15 moves, Mr. Jack loses. If Mr. Jack gets caught by the investigator, Mr. Jack loses. Uh, otherwise, if he can get to all four, 
then he wins the game. Now let me first talk to those of you who've played Letters from Whitechapel. This game is a very different game than Letters from Whitechapel. Uh, Letters from Whitechapel was a fairly complex game. Uh, if someone really good was playing Jack the Ripper and other players were playing investigators, you'd have a very hard time catching him. It was much more deeper than this one with a lot more paths to victory or, or different paths that Mr. Jack could take. Um, it was not as, as intuitive. This game is very easy to understand. The other one was more difficult. The other one is much more grisly looking too. This one, while Mr. what Mr. Jack did is an awful thing, a terrible thing, but this game kind of doesn't really touch on what he's done. It just touches on the chase itself. There's no blood on the board. The cover is actually the scariest looking thing about the game, and it's really not that bad. So that the theme is, is, is more palatable to people who might be squeamish, rightfully so, about what, what Jack did. That being said, the gameplay itself is a simple, fun, ch chase the other person down game. And the closest comparison I can give this game to is Scotland Yard. Now, Scotland Yard is a game a lot of people know. You're hunting down Mr. X. This has a very similar feel to this. Now, this is a little bit more free than Scotland Yard. In Scotland Yard, uh, the detectives were stuck by what tickets they had to take, and they're taking subways and taxis and buses. Here, the detectives are just moving together, working together, using their once-per-game special ability, and just trying to corner Mr. Jack. From the get-go, Mr. Jack is under pressure. I played Mr. Jack and I'm sitting there breathing hard. The detectives could have caught me on turn two. They didn't because I didn't think I'd walk right in their noses like that, but it was possible. And because of that, as you're finding clues, you're like, oh, this is where he went. So I know he went this way. So that's just probably where he is now. And you're using this, not like where is he now, but where he was to figure out where he is now to get to the right spots. And it's not too hard to get from one spot to another in 15 moves, but to get to another in 15 moves rather than catching you. So you might go slowly so they don't catch you, but if you go too slowly, you won't get there in time. The most experienced person, the rule book says, should play Mr. Jack, and that is certainly the case. You should be the person running and hiding from everybody else because it is easier, I think, for the people to catch him. Now, yes, I'm talking on the normal levels of the game when you get to the high-end levels and people know what they're doing. It is a deadly cat and mouse type game. But this is a game that fits in 45 minutes. I really like that. Letters from Whitechapel was a very long game and it has its advantages. But being able to play something like this quickly, to sit there and go, he's here, here, here. Okay, well now he went another space. So he probably didn't go that way. So now he's in one of these five spots. And working together as a team, trying to corral him. It, again, this feels like Scotland Yard. If you already have Scotland Yard, this while not duplicating it, I don't know why you would need to have both in your collection. I feel like they've really scratched that same itch. I like it though. It's a small box, has a good sized game inside it. Certainly recommend it for me, Whitehall Mystery. Nice Tower of Judgment, approved! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Shut the door. <laughs>